This is my scratch built wide pod flight test arrow wing equipped with a Maytech F411WSE flight controller running iNav 2.2.1. Let's take it for a fly, shall we? Okay, so here we are out at the flying field, and this is basically one of the very first flights in my iNav flight test aero based wing. The craft is a flight test aero design, but it has a different center pod, one in which I designed myself in Fusion 360 and uh, printed on my 3D printer. And um, that has enough space in it for the flight controller and the uh, 2200 battery free cell. So this is iNav 2.2.1, as you saw from the boot up screen. And we're going to try a launch with an auto launch sequence. Uh, the auto launch on this flight controller is programmed to always be on when armed. So I arm it and it's automatically an auto launch until you move the sticks or a timeout has passed. And so you'll see when it is armed it will show the uh, coordinates, GPS coordinates. Uh, no secret I'm at a park in Manhattan, Kansas, USA. And this was filmed on uh, November 16th, 2019. And I'm just going to chuck it and it's going to fly off. And I'm going to go want to sit in one of those chairs that you might have seen there. But you can see here, now that's all that I get for auto launch until it changed to horizon mode. That's all you, the time you get. And that's a parameter I think you can set. And I need to set that for longer. So I want a little steeper climb angle. And so what I did there was I put it in hold mode or loiter mode. And oh, there's the side switching camera. I love that. I'll talk a little bit about, more about that later. But for now, I uh, put it into loiter mode so I could get myself situated which is really what I want to do when I throw it in the air and it's launching. But I haven't programmed in enough time, I don't think, to go sit down and get my goggles situated even though they were on my head. So now I'm flying the plane again in horizon mode. And again, I'm a very newbie pilot. I just learned how to fly fixed wing planes this uh, summer of 2019. And I've only basically flown planes that I've built myself from flight test designs or uh, designs that I've modified from flight test designs. And um, I feel like it's been a very successful summer. This is, I mean, I'm brand new to iNav. This is literally maybe my fourth or fifth actual flight of an iNav plane. Um, I haven't even switched it into return to home yet, ever. Um, I'm assuming it works because hold mode works, but I'm going to be testing that hopefully in the near future. That's the uh, Blue River out in front of us. And it's off to the right. It's heading toward the confluence of the Blue and Kansas Rivers. Uh, and then the Kansas River continues on east to the Missouri River. It meets up with the Missouri River in Kansas City. We're out west of Kansas City here in Manhattan, Kansas, and that road up ahead is Knox Drive or something like that. And then there you can see the uh, what used to be called the Industrial Park, and 
has, uh, there's a Menards up there and some other stores. Beyond that is downtown Manhattan. So I'm learning Horizon Mode here. Uh, obviously Horizon Mode, similar to in quadcopters, is an auto level mode, but that lets you flip all the way around, either in a roll or pitch axis. Uh, and then if you let go of the sticks or recenter the sticks, the uh, craft will level itself back out. Should also mention that it's really windy. And I should also mention, I don't know what that low hum is, and I'm not enough of a video editor, well, skilled enough of a video editor to cut that out. Okay, since we just switched back and forth, uh, well, we'll wait till the next time, I think. I think I switched to the camera again. So I'm basically using this flight to get a feel for flying and enjoying the, I think I enjoy the side view camera in a little while here. I put it in hold mode and just look out the side. There, the low buzzing just ended. I don't know what that is. I, I think it's uh, something to do with an electrical noise and not an actual vibration on the craft. So here we are turning back towards the river. And um, it should be noted that in my goggles, oh, and it's here too. <laughs> it's every on the screen, obviously, in this recording. The altitude, which is over to the right, uh, uh, below the destination, a uh, distance to home, uh, uh, where it says 658, 663, 669. So I'm going away from home anyway. It's that number is increasing. Below that should be the altitude. And the altitude isn't there. It disappears from time to time. Uh, I've noticed that for the first time on this flight. But then when I looked back at the last couple, like I said, this is only like the fourth flight I nav total in my life. Um, I almost make it to a kilometer there. Did you see that? And I didn't quite. That was my, I, that was another thing I was going to try to do is make it one kilometer. Anyway, I am rambling totally on this. This is uh, also an experiment in making uh, YouTube videos and doing a voiceover. So I've already edited this video, and now I'm watching it and doing a voiceover, and I've never done that before either. So uh, over right on the right side where the vertical dashes are, that is where we are sitting. That right dead ahead now, below us, we're sitting right in front of that, uh, that shelter there. That's where we fly. And we, it's pretty nice. We can put all our gear in that shelter. Parking is right there. Lots of open space. This isn't a very interesting place to fly quads, but for planes, it's great. Okay, so now I've switched it into manual mode. And I'm not sure uh, if I know how to fly anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little scared here. Even though I know how to fly a, a wing like this, uh, I have a wing almost exactly the same as this. It's just a line of sight wing and I fly that one but I have expo on it and rates and things like that and I don't have anything set up for this in manual mode um, I should note that the bounciness isn't due to tuning I don't think it's due to the wind and um, oh the altitude's back popped back sometime when I wasn't paying attention anyway the uh, you can see the wind strength if you watch my speed depending on which direction I'm going. So now the wind is coming kind of from the right edge of the screen. And then as I turn away, you can see my speed increases drastically up there. Now I'm going seven, over almost 80 kilometers an hour. And then as I turn back into the wind, which is what we're almost doing there, wind is now coming from our left side, front left. It slows down a lot. I think the wind was changing direction and it might be coming almost from dead ahead or at least dead south. 
which or dead north, which would be that line straight ahead between those two fields across the river. That's a north-south line. Anyway, I think the wind is blowing about, oh, I don't know, 15 miles an hour. And um, that's a pretty good clip for this little wing. The wing with the wide pod measures about 850 millimeters uh, wingspan, and it weighs, oh, I don't have it sitting here. It weighs, uh, I think it was almost 600, 500 something grams. Okay, so here I'm gonna go into hold, and I'm looking out the side. And so I should talk a little bit about the camera is a, uh, this little side view camera is just a cheapy Banggood $7 camera. And uh, I added it because the Maytech F411WSE board has very conveniently an integrated camera switcher. And uh, I have a bunch of those Hobby King cheap, cheapy camera switchers and some from Banggood too. I just never used them. I have them in my drawer of stuff. But I never wired them up. Anyway, this, you need an extra channel, a PWM channel to work those. And this one just works right through S-Bus and flight controller. So that's nice. Anyway, uh, there was the cameras looking out the side. And uh, that's really cool. I've had a lot of fun with that these last couple flights because it's just a it, it's like you're sitting in the plane a little bit. It's not quite a head tracker, but Anyway, I think here I'm thinking about doing a low pass, and I don't quite achieve that because, I'm, like I said, I'm not a very good pilot. But uh, here we are heading towards where we're sitting right there out in front of us. It's pretty uh, fun it, it, to, hear the, to hear the sound of the plane go by, even though you're in the goggles, you can't see it. What I want to do uh, is program a 3D cruise mode. Yeah, it's really windy. There's some people walking their dogs out there. Now that breakup, I have to say, is much, much, much worse on the DVR than it is in the goggles. Um, my uh, video setup on this is a uh, Eashin 5825 is it? I have a I have a list here of everything that's in this craft. It's an Eashin 5258 TX 5258 BTX. It I think it goes up to 800 milliwatts. It has a built-in mic and that's the sound you can hear, which is pretty it's poor. Oh, and here I am coming for a landing, and it's a pretty poor landing, but it's one of my very first landings in FPV. So uh, I didn't break the plane, <laughs> that's good. And we are looking out the side camera there. Uh, and here we can see our statistics for the flight. And the max current 30, 13 amps, that's interesting to look at. And uh, we had a flight time of 11 minutes and 33 seconds, so not too bad. You can see I almost got away to a kilometer, 992 meters. Anyway, to finish this up, I'd like to say uh, thanks to all the people on YouTube who I've learned from. Uh, people like Andrew Newton and Powell Spikowski and uh, Josh Bixler for the FT Aero Design, uh, Matt Ogborn, Ragnanutsov, of course, Sir Bruce. Uh, RC Model Reviews, Curie Kitten, Joshua Bardwell. Oh, so many people on the internet that on YouTube that have uh, inspired me also to try to share my knowledge. And this, I'm not really sharing knowledge today, but I'm flopping my plane up and down is what I'm doing. I'm looking at the servos move. So. We're almost at the end of our flight, or the end of this video, and I'd just like to say thanks to all those people and more on YouTube. And 
I hope to make more videos and learn uh, more about fixed wing and quads and experiment with head trackers and I'm looking forward to a winter of building. Yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day everybody and happy Thanksgiving as I'm recording this on Thanksgiving 2019. Peace out.